Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So today, just a short video. Uh, I'm trying to keep you here forever. Uh, anyways, the difference between 6-axis gyro quadcopters and 4-axis gyro quadcopters. So I brought out my two bigger guys, and uh, this is my V929 uh, Beetle 4-axis gyro. And this, of course, is the new um, upgraded V949, aka WL Toys V212 6 axis gyro uh, quadcopter. And um, I've been having a ton of fun with this. As you guys know, I'm kind of flooding the channel with videos right now with it. This thing is a real blast. I'm really loving this thing a lot. Anyways, um, so the differences are pretty simple. Um, four axis versus six axis. So on a four axis gyro quadcopter, what happens is when you're moving forward, backward, left or right, whatever direction you happen to be going in and then you let go of the stick, you're gonna keep going in that direction. You're gonna have to self-correct. The, the quad cannot self-correct by itself. Eventually it may start to try and settle down, but it may not either. But um, it, it's not going to self-correct um, instantaneously, it's not going to have like a delay, even a minor one, and then self-correct, you know, and if you flip upside down, you are definitely in trouble and you're going to the ground, not optional, okay? Now with a six-axis gyro quad, forward, backward, left, or right, let go of the stick, boom, it self-corrects. Now, because this is a little bit larger quad than your average nano quad or the hubs in uh, H107C, for example, those size categories, the, there is a very slight delay in that recovery, but it does happen, okay? Um, those other quads, because they have mental head speed because of having small blades, um, they can recover really quick, like just snap and boom, they can recover. Where this thing is just a little bit of a delay and then it recovers, no problem. The other advantage to the six axis gyro uh, quads is they're supposed to be able to recorrect if they go upside down. Now I haven't tested this theory, but this is what I've seen on some videos that they say you can do this. Kind of like you can take this thing and throw it in the air and then just hit the throttle and boom it straightens out and flies you know, uh, type of thing. So we're going to be testing that for sure once all of our snow is gone and then this way if I do happen to crash um, then we'll be okay. The other thing they say this thing can handle doing uh, according to the promo videos is when you're up there flying you can actually kill the power to the quad right at the radio, kill it at the radio and um, like we're not talking just putting the stick down, we're talking turning the radio off letting it start to drop, turn the radio back on, boom, boom, rebind, and start flying again. They say you can do that. We're going to test those things too. Um, these are things I just will not test um, outside in the winter time because I don't want to wreck the quad. Um, but that's the idea behind it. Now, four axis or six axis gyro quad, when you're doing like a pirouette move, okay, so you're basically you're turning the quad, you know, left or right, whatever position you stop at, it will stop on a four or six axis gyro quad, okay? That's fine, that's normal, it happens that way, it's designed that way, right? Even our helicopters do the same thing, they will just stop where we let it go when we're doing a pirouette type thing. So, but with the six axis, like I said, it will recover quickly. The four axis, you need to self-correct. Now, as far as these two particular quads go, there's some differences between them for the cyclics uh, control. So the amount of uh, forward, backward, left and right movement you can give them um, in different uh, levels. So when you turn on your transmitters, either one of these things will actually default to 20%, which is great for very docile flying, especially in an indoor environment, because you don't want it to move quick in a small area. You want it to move extremely slow. Outdoors, I found that even on a calm, calm day, um, you want to use a minimum of 40% outdoors. And this is going to give you a much better flying experience than 20%. Otherwise, 20%, you're basically putting the stick full force, and you're barely even moving, if at all, especially if you have a slight breeze. Right? So 40%, very ideal. 60%, really good. Um, and then, of course, you got 80 and 100% on this quad, 
This quad only supports 20, 40, 60, and 100. This is 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. I don't know why they didn't put the 80 in this one. And, uh, but even on like 60%, this quad can get up on an angle like this. That's kind of crazy, you know, and it can really move. And as it's on this angle, it actually heads towards planet Earth, okay? So you need to be really high up with this thing and put it into a big steep move like that to, you know, generate your speed and then keep it up. And uh, you'll learn, you know, it, it's not that difficult, you'll learn. And same as this one, when this one's on 60%, you know, it can get up and move pretty good too on a steep angle. At 100% on either quad, you're not doing general flying, you're doing flipping. And as long as you're in that 100%, the radio is going to go beep, 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 at you. And it'll keep doing that until you disengage it, okay? This one has lights, this one doesn't, but you can get a light kit for this. But in that flipping mode, the longer you keep it on there, you can just keep going flip crazy, like boom, 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 and have a lot of fun with it. Now, what I like about this one is there is a slight delay between flips. Uh, so, you know, you do a flip and you can start moving forward a bit and then do another flip. So I tried something a little different today. I was going forward, did my flip forward, then I immediately kicked it backwards to suck the thing back. And then I had to actually let go and then bounce it again. And uh, when I did that, it did a backwards flip and it was kind of cool. It's hard to see it on the video, but it's how it happened. And uh, so I like that little delay time it has on this one. Okay, but um, anyways, I haven't tried it on, on the Beetle yet, so I don't know if it has the same delay time. But that's your basic differences between four and six axis. Now, another thing I want to touch on on these two particular quads too, um, they do seem to have the same motors, the same gears, the same uh, pinions for the uh, motors and the gearing, same uh, shaft system. These are carbon uh, shafts that get glued onto the gear. Um, the blades are going to be different. These blades are actually slightly shorter on the V929, where on the 212 they're a larger blade. And what that found that I've, I've seen that I found on it, which is nice, is uh, with the, uh, the 212 here, I can't even get to a quarter throttle and it's already coming up into the air. For this thing here, I'm you know just under half and it's coming up into the air. You know, and there's not much weight difference between the two of these things. They're, they're very similar in weight to each other. You know, they're not off by that much. But you've got smaller blades, it's going to take a lot more to get this in the air as opposed to bigger blades. It doesn't take so much. You know, so that's going to be a difference as well. Um, I find that coming back down, even on a low stick power, um, this one actually comes down really super nice, where this one comes down very shaky and uh, a lot quicker. Um, so, you know, but that has a lot to do with, of course, blades and gyro system, you know, and of course, bigger blades and 6-axis gyro. So anyways, guys, that's pretty much about it. It covers it, um, but I thought I'd do this. I've not done a video like this before to explain the differences. Um, but I thought, hey, why not, you know, and uh, it's something that, um, you know, those of you who didn't know, well, you now know. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.